Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. Once again, I am super excited to share with you guys all the amazing tests that we have conducted on our synchronous DC to DC converter project. So at this point guys, I can comfortably tell you guys that we have been able to double the output power that we can get out of these converters by using this synchronous sharing method. All right guys, in the last video, we conducted the test using 24 volt power supplies. So what we plan to do in this video is to increase the input voltage level that we're gonna use to test the converter system to 36 volts. And if that goes well, we increase it again to 48 volts. And the overall goal is for us to look at, first of all, the system efficiency at 36 volts. And we again measure the system efficiency at 48 volts. And also another thing we're gonna do is to look at the low sharing deviation between the two converters that we have on the parallel system. And overall, what that tells us is how much power each of the converter is contributing to be able to drive the output load that we have on the system. Before we jump right into the testing, one thing I'd like to mention is that what we're doing here goes beyond just getting two converters and connecting them in parallel. We have tried that before, it doesn't work guys. So don't go out there and buy two converters and connect them in parallel, you're not gonna get the same result. So everything we're doing here, there's a lot of tweaking, a lot of actually removing some components, tuning the circuit to be able to make this to actually work. And in a nutshell, the synchronous sharing method comes down to essentially using the same PWM signal to drive both converters. So what's going on here, guys, is that one of the converters is the brain of the system. So it looks at how much output load we have on the system and says, this is how we're gonna configure the PWM on state or duty cycle to be able to adapt to that load. And it's gonna share that PWM signal with the next converter. And as I said, I would be able to share all the schematic, everything that we have done at the end of the series. So I want everybody to be kind of patient. Let's test this process to make sure everything is gonna work well. I know we have some concerns about reliability, redundancy, single points of failures. Those are all good concerns. But the thing to keep in mind is that these are cheap $25 converters. There's a limit to what we can do. So I am highly impressed with the results I'm seeing. All right, my friends, now let's jump right into the testing. All right, in the first test that was in the first video of the series, we tested the system using 24 volt supplies. So what we're hoping to do here is to now increase that voltage and see how much power we're gonna get out of the system. So for that, we're gonna use our lead time 38 volt lithium ion phosphate battery system. And if everything goes well, we're gonna try to increase the uh, test voltage by using four server power supplies here, which will give us 48 volts at 65 amps. Another major change that we made for the setup is that we increased the loads that we're using to test the system. So what we have here now are two 120 volts, 2000 watts resistive water heaters. And these water heaters are connected in parallel, as you can see here. So that essentially gives us a load of 4,000 watts. And as you guys know, these are resistive heaters. So the load that we end up putting on the system is proportional to the output voltage level. So that is kind of how we're gonna implement the uh, load stepping that way. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the system and we get started. All right, so we pushed the system a little bit more. So we got an output voltage of 87.2 volts. So let's look at how the two converters are now sharing the load. All right, so we have the first converter going through the first current clamp and we're seeing a measured output current of 11.24 amps. The second converter here goes through this current clamp and we are seeing a delivered output current of approximately 12 amps. All right. So a quick observation is that as we leave the system to run for a while, as the temperatures begin to stabilize between the two converters, 
what we're seeing is that the shared output current begins to get closer and closer. So right now we see converter A, we're seeing the delivered output current of 11.3 amps. Converter B, the delivered output current of about 12 amps. So it's only about 0.7 differential between the two converters. And in my opinion, that's really, really good, guys. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. My plan is really to keep these videos short so that way it's easy for me to make them and also easy for you guys to follow with the progress. And in the very end, I'm gonna stitch all the videos together to make one single video that you guys can use as a reference if you have to do this in the future. So overall, what we have seen is that we have tested the system with 36 volts. We increased the voltage to 48 volts. So we saw a very good load sharing between the converters. We only saw about a 5% deviation using the 36 volt input and the 48 volt input. And when we tested it using the 36 volt, we got about 2000 watts of load at the output of the system. And when we tested it using the 48 volt, we got about uh, 3000 watts of load out of the system. That is quite impressive. And efficiency wise, we measured greater than 92% efficiency for the boost converter system. If you ask me guys, that's quite impressive and I am happy with the performance of this system. And as I mentioned, my plan is to push the system to the limit to see if the converter is gonna fail and how it's gonna fail. All right, guys, if you like to see all this progress, don't forget to subscribe to the Innovation Lab and don't forget to interact with the video. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the video and also give us, share your comments, share your ideas with us and we'll greatly appreciate all of that. All right, my friends, I will see you guys in the next video.